like you can come even angry you can I, I develop jealousy towards other people that had nothing to do with it it was just like their boss liked them better than my boss liked me and I started Hey everyone, welcome back to the You vs. You podcast where I talk with members of the Council for Human Development about how we can expand our minds and recode reality. Today I'm here with David Karasek, one of the co-founders of the program. Hey David, so I thought today we can talk about how to best navigate the dynamics that you had to deal with in the past when you were working in the banking sector. So can you maybe give us a brief overview of the main challenges of a banker? Uh, hey Agnes, thanks for having me back. So I reckon when I came from university, I was a little bit naive and I started, you know, you learn about teamwork and how everything is quite groovy when, when you do it in the right way. And I started, started out on a learning curve really steep, but then I soon realized that basically what it was, it didn't really like depend on what I was doing, right? I was like a junior and it depended on uh, your teammates, it depended a lot on your boss and, and on corporate politics. And when you look at banking, I do believe that the biggest challenge that banking has, or one of the biggest challenges, is that the people working in the bank, because you have a lot of like career bankers, like career bankers that have been with the bank for many, many years. And you know, they like taking care of their garden, they're very connected to the key decision makers, and you know how it is. You get promoted, but oftentimes not based on what you actually um, what value you bring, but it's, mm, it's, it's like about, how it's much. a lot about the relationships. Exactly. And if you don't know how to navigate those corporate politics, what happens is that you will feel maybe not appreciated. And also you'll feel like you're not in control and that can be very, that can dampen you and that can demotivate you and actually put you in a very, like you can come even angry. You can, I, I developed jealousy towards other people that had nothing to do with it. It was just like their boss liked them better than my boss liked me. And I started to develop jealousy towards these people. And you have to be quite really honest with yourself to be aware of those feelings, but they'll cripple you in the long term. So I believe if you like navigate in corporate politics um, and, and getting along with, you know, and influencing in a good way, key decision makers and also selling yourself is a key factor. So how did you deal with these kind of feelings that you had when you were jealous of other people and you felt a little bit stuck? I, I quit. I uh, quit and went to another, another bank. You know that, but that was the beauty of being, I guess, at the time, you know, I still don't have a family, but that gave me that, that freedom. And I didn't, you know, the security didn't mean so much at that point. And I knew that, you know, my salary was still, you know, on, on the junior end. So it was always possible especially at the time it was like 2013 the economy was booming and uh, you know in switzerland you have to you can basically apply to another job and then when you have it then you you quit the other one so that's basically what happened and yeah and looking back at it how would you best navigate it now yeah i would i would say that the first thing is to to realize and to accept that we are on a lot of what we're doing is run on autopilot, right? This is the social conditioning. It's like we came to the planet as kids and we were really, really free. But then all the, the conditioning happened. It started like at home, then in school and, you know, your peers, geography, culture. And it's not, it's not in a negative way. It made us who we are today. But what I'm suggesting is, and I'm like, everybody can be more than, than we are today. And basically when you start accepting like our ignorance that there's a lot of things that we don't know there's like huge growth opportunities for you out there and that's really the first step because if you say oh i know most of life you know i'm 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 very comfortable i feel good like if you really really do that's great for you then you you kind of made it right but if you're very honest um and there's a lot of things that piss you off that you don't like that could be better relationships that you're not happy with then just accepting that and that opens you for, for tremendous growth. And I'll say that's like the first step. And you know, I we cannot always control what happens to us, but we can always, and I mean always choose how we react to to that situation. And that's really where the that's so like empowering, you know, because it gives all the power to you, to me, to whoever chooses to do that. And what do you think is the best reaction? Faith and positivity? 
Yeah, I, I positivity is uh, you know it, it sounds good on surface level, but positivity is just it's um you can tell yourself I'm positive today and this and that, but if your unconscious mind that is we already talked about this in earlier episodes, it's like a million times more powerful than your conscious mind. So if you tell yourself, oh today you know I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be positive and I'm gonna do this and that, it's you know usually it's not gonna work or it's gonna work for like one or two times. And then you go back to, to the old habits, to the old patterns. And that's also, you know, the finding limiting patterns. Like this is, is a key thing because, for example, people in banking, they often say, I can't sell myself or I can't, I'm not a seller. I can't sell. Or another one is a bit more on the light side is uh, I'm bad with names. But guess what? If you say I'm bad with names and you get introduced to people, then you will forget the names because you tell yourself that you're bad with names. You tell other people, oh, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. They will project that back to you. The universe is listening, you know, for the people that are a bit on the spiritual path. The universe if gives you what you're saying. And so, um, yeah, those, how you identify yourself is one of the key concepts. And that's where I would say it's super important. And you, you've uh, also had some experience with that. When somebody listens to what you say, that's... It's different than when, because when you speak and when I speak, I'm not like aware of all the words that, words that I use. But yeah. if somebody listens to you like a brain surgeon and stops you right when you said it and you go back and you start to question it, why did I say that I'm bad with names? Where does it come from? And all that's when, 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 when the growth will start to happen and it goes really, really fast. Yeah. And that's why it's super interesting Then the things we say often don't come across how we want them to. Yeah, because the, the, the words have a, also have a different meaning to you or to me and to anybody else. Like it's, that's why it's so important. To people just assume that the other people think like, like you and me or, or like, you know, not even you and me, just me, for example. So that's a big mistake because if, uh, you know, if I say, what do you think of when I say dog, you know, you, what comes to mind for you? Um, well, my parents have a dog, and that's the first yeah. thing I think about, of course. <laughs> yeah, so. and what's that dog? Where is the dog? In Vienna. Oh, and is he in? When, but that picture, is it inside, outside? It doesn't matter. It's like a small so, black Labrador, and that's what yeah. I think about, you know? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. so I think of a husky because I saw a husky uh, yeah. just on the weekend. So it, it really it depends. So it's good to clarify, and that with that, you also um, you don't have so many misunderstandings right because you and honestly people don't often do that like people they keep it like shallow like this small talk and it gets boring come on like if you know i remember when people are so who like uh hey i'm david and hi i'm agnes and then what do you do i would say i'm a banker and then like literally 95 percent of the time the conversation will go to the same place it's like oh which bank oh how long oh yeah do you know that it's always like this small talk and people yeah. don't like, like a lot of people tell me they don't like it. So it's like, you can really make more out of it by going into the depth and the people all of a sudden they'll come to you and they, they say, Oh, you know, I, I usually don't tell people, but I feel really comfortable with you. So I'll tell you. Yeah. And, and that's really where, where you become a good influencer and you can start to, um, you know, positively influence your environment first yourself and then everybody around you. And uh, you developed a little bit of a guideline for bankers in order to find more meaning, passion, and personal freedom in their job. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, let's, um, it's, uh, the model, yeah, I like it. It's super cool. It's called the onion layer formula because we peel back those um, layers of the onion um, of social conditioning, right? One by one. And the, the goal is to go to your core, to your basically to your five-year-old self when you were super creative, communicative, and confident. And so the first that we already talked about, that you have to accept that a lot of our life is run on autopilot and you want to become the driver of this. That starts with making a choice, accepting that we're very ignorant. For example, that nine, over 99.9% .9 of what is, we cannot decode with our five senses. And I give you an example because of the dog that I saw this weekend. We could, uh, he had a toy. And he was one year old, right? He's like a husky and super cute and full of energy. And we could um, take the toy and hide it. So we keep the dog somewhere and then go 100 meter away and hide the toy. He didn't see any of that. And then you tell him, go search for it, right? And he would go exactly the, the path that I went to hide it. And I went like zigzag to see where's a good spot to really hide it. Well, 
and he would just and go and not look, but just smell my path and then find the toy, you know? And and you could do that as many times as you wanted. You could put the toy somewhere in the air. He would he couldn't get it down, but he could like tell where it is, right? It's incredible. So we can obviously smell something like that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And a dog could easily do it, right? So yeah. it was just like a really great example of how ignorant we are. And so when we accept that, we are opening ourselves also to the spiritual world, which is a huge thing that I would say a lot of people uh, are a bit missing. And I don't mean religion, but the, your own spiritual path, because we have the body, the mind, and then the last piece to the puzzle is the spirit. And when you have it all, that's when, when the doors really open up. So that's the first step. And the second step I would say is to, to um, you have, we have suppressed potential because I don't think any of us is working at the, the full potential. We can, we can do more, we can be more, we can influence more, we can have a bigger impact, all of these, whatever it is for you. And that, that, that would be the next step to get you in a state of, we call it super creativity, super communication and super confidence. And that happens really when you come back to your, when you find out who you really are, when you, when that social conditioning is going away, does that make sense? When the onion exposes itself, when the core exposes, all that energy that you previously used to validate yourself with other people, to, um, you know, compare yourself with, with other people, that in my case, it was a big one, that energy is now free and you become present. And when you're present, you know, you don't worry so much about the future. You can still have a plan, but you're in the present because the only moment is the now. Everything that ever happened was in the now. Everything that ever will happen is in the now. So that's really the only place we can make a difference. And so I'll give you an example with uh, that just happened yesterday with um, um, how we identify ourselves and how we can be ourselves. I, I was on the boat with a friend and his, his girlfriend. And she asked me, she's 37. And she asked me, oh, I know I was saying something about, yeah, I'm, I'm still young. And, and then she asked me, so how young are you? And I said, 32. And she's like, oh, you know, that's not so young. In, in Russia, you know, they have already have kids and that's not so young. And what does that tell you, right? She's like, she has that belief of where she comes from that with 32, you're not young anymore. But I say, like, I don't care what they think. I'm, if I, I feel myself, and you see that with these old guys that go to the gym or do outside. Outdoors, they're like 75 years old and they look fit like a 50 year old because they don't care what other people, they just, they feel young and they want to remain young and they do what's necessary, right? So it's very powerful when you don't compare yourself with, with the outside, where you look more inside and, and the power comes from with it. Yeah, it's a different and context. That, right? Yeah, it's, and, and that's so empowering because when you don't care anymore, it's really, and you know, I do know people that don't care and guess what? They're doing extremely well and they're, they're, um, and most of them are happy, right? So, but the people that always look on the outside, they, it's almost like they're compensating something that's missing. And that's a super cool thing because there's a lot of potential and that comes a bit with your finding your own spiritual path. And then also like part of this is also that you manage your emotional complexity I, because when you're subservient to emotions, they govern you and they, they come and they go and you're not really in control. Emotions are a good thing. Right? Don't get me wrong. They're very useful, but we have to be in control of them. So when we get angry, it's okay. We can become angry. We can express a point, but then go back to a state of um, being calm and a state of love. You know, and that confuses people when you, they're like, what, what just happened? You know, because they're still angry and they're going to be angry for a while. We when we can change that and it's it's doable, it's really powerful and it's also good for your own sanity because when you're in control of the emotion, not subservient to them. Do you have a brief tip of how to let go fast or like control your emotions if you know someone is feeling something really intense? Yeah. To all right. So I guess it is a sense of detachment a little bit. But that, that's quite spiritual. I would say if you, if you just assume, this is a simple one. If you assume, because for some reason you speak to that person and you care and that other person cares. Otherwise, you wouldn't like even get into an argument because if you just don't care, you're like, okay, you know, fuck off and you go your way. But if you just assume that the person, the conversation partner is doing the best that he or she can at that point of time with what he or she knows and, and who she knows and her environment, 
then you can be very understanding because that person is not going to hurt you um, on purpose or most of them, you know, it, it could happen, but then it's time you, you'll feel it and it's time to leave that whatever conversation relationship that is. But I would say if you just assume the best, you can be much more understanding of, um, and you know, there's a cool that uh, one example that probably many people have heard when you're driving a car and somebody cuts you off, right? You could be, you could freak out and, you know, say all the bad words, but then you could also just assume that person has somebody sick in the back and they have to rush to the hospital, for example. It's like an analogy. So you, you know, you just assume they're doing the best and that's how you can be more understanding of the situation. Yeah, great example. Yeah, do you also yeah. want to add anything? No, I think uh, that's uh, just that uh, if you if you just all right. So let me just do the the last um, the last uh, part of it is the environment because a lot of times uh, the environment is quite stressful. And if you with all what we already discussed, when you change yourself, all of a sudden you will inf you will influence massively your environment, like your social environment, and that's when when you can start to leverage the people that you already know and they will actually start to help you in your development. You help them and they'll help you. It's all like a little bit on an unconscious level, but the leveraging of the environment is super important because that will accelerate the growth feeder even more. And that's just like the last last part of that onion layer formula. Uh, thank you. That sounds really great. I really love the tips that you gave. And uh, if you want to find out more, make sure to check out councilforhumandevelopment.org and please share the podcast with your friends on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter with the hashtag Council for Human Development.